as part of this series on different aspects of British culture, I've been asked to talk about some of the unusual festivals that we have here in the UK. And some of our festivals are so strange that even English people don't understand what's happening. And the perfect example of that is what's happening tonight. And perhaps in the background tonight, you will hear the sound of fireworks. Here you can see a picture of fireworks. On the right hand side of this picture, you can see a large group of people gathered around a bonfire, a huge fire which is burnt to celebrate this evening. Families up and down the country will be celebrating with jacket potatoes in the oven. Children love this rare opportunity to be out at night. It's usually very cold at this time of year, so people have to wear lots of clothes to keep warm. And Guy Fawkes Night has always been one of the most popular festivals in the British calendar. Guy Fawkes Night is on November the 5th, and it's also known as Bonfire Night or Fireworks Night. Guy Fawkes was a real person who was born in 1570 and died in 1606. To the French, he's known as Guy Fawkes, and the Spanish know him as Guido Fawkes. Although he was English, he had Spanish parents and fought for the Spanish for many years. Here you can see a picture of Guy Fawkes as he was about to light some explosives. You can see some rats. He's clearly in a cellar or basement and he's about to light some gunpowder. And here you can see some pictures of Guy Fawkes being caught by policemen just when he was about to commit his crime. Guy Fawkes was just one man who was part of a conspiracy, a conspiracy that was known as the Gunpowder Plot, which took place in 1605. So here we can see a barrel of gunpowder, a powerful form of explosive. And here you can see a picture of the Houses of Parliament, the home of the British government, where Guy Fawkes was waiting with a large pile of gunpowder ready to destroy the building. He was famously caught at the last moment, just before starting the fire. So why was Guy Fawkes ready to destroy his own government? He was an Englishman after all. So to explain why Guy Fawkes wanted to destroy the British government, we have to go back nearly 2,000 years in a story that has many twists and turns and starts out with this man, a rather famous troublemaker who was an agent of peace and yet has been the cause of many wars and the reason for a lot of fighting. Christians were often used as food for lions in the huge Roman colosseums and amphitheatres as a form of entertainment. Obviously, the Christians needed protection from the Roman Empire, so they developed a secret code. It was very dangerous to be a Christian at that time. And if you wanted to show other people that you were a Christian without the Romans finding out, then you needed a password. And the fish was the first password that they commonly used. Someone could draw the outline of a fish, and then if another person was a Christian, they could put an eye in the fish. The fish was a secret code. If you didn't know the code, you could easily think that someone was just making a drawing with their toe. But if another Christian knew the code, they could put the I or the I in the fish. So this is a picture in the sand of a fish, and here someone has added an I. Now another strange part of this story connects with the Dead Sea Scrolls. Here is a location which is very close to the Dead Sea. And here you can see a small cave where some explorers found some scrolls, old pieces of writing. And when they opened and studied these pieces of writing, they found some very unusual pieces of information. The Dead Sea Scrolls came from the time just after when Jesus was reported to be alive. This man, John Allegro, was invited by the Catholic Church to examine and translate the Dead Sea Scrolls because he was a specialist in Aramaic languages, the languages from that time. And he was very surprised to discover that Jesus was actually a code word for something else, a mushroom. In fact, it seemed that many of the stories of Jesus were related to mushrooms, 
and that the Christians were a secret group of people who used to use these mushrooms. And this provides another possible explanation for why the Christians had to survive in secret. And here you can see a picture of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden with the snake and an apple circled around a tree of mushrooms. More about this can be found in John Allegro's book The Sacred Mushroom and the Cross. Whatever stories we choose to believe about the origins of the Christian community, the figure of Jesus was always described as a rebellious character who challenged the system of that time. Here is a picture from a famous story about Jesus where he went into the temple and told the moneylenders that what they were doing was wrong. Here you can see him pushing over the tables of money. Another famous story from the moment when Jesus died was that the curtain which traditionally separated the common people from the area where God lived was torn in the middle, which was interpreted as saying that the barrier between God and the people had been destroyed. During those early years of the Christian community, the Roman Empire dominated a huge part of Europe, North Africa and the Middle East. And it was just at that time when the Roman Empire seemed to be dying that we saw the birth of the Roman Church. Here you can see a picture of the Vatican. The Roman Catholic Church took the ideas of early Christianity and made them popular. Now the story of Jesus wouldn't be a secret anymore. This is the Pope greeting a huge number of his Catholic followers in the Vatican. And here is the Emperor from Star Wars. No, on the left you can see the Pope and on the right you can see the Emperor from Star Wars. So here again you can see the Pope sitting in front of a lovely image of the Apocalypse. And here you can see him sitting in Mouth. the mouth of a hall which looks like a serpent. Mm. And here you can see him sitting in the serpent's mouth. Now some of you may recognise this man and his name was Martin Luther. Martin Luther became very famous because he was connected with the creation of the Protestant church. Here is an image from a famous story where Martin Luther hammered a declaration of his beliefs to his local church. He explained very clearly how he wasn't happy with many of the ideas of the Catholic Church and for this he became their enemy. Here is a picture of Henry VIII and he really liked Martin Luther's ideas because he didn't like the Catholic Church very much either. He desperately wanted to find a way to stop killing his wives and because the Catholic Church said that he couldn't divorce them, well, he had to kill them. Some people say that King Henry VIII had a genuine mystical revelation and it was for this that he wanted all the people of England to be able to read the story of Jesus. In the Catholic Church, the Bible had always been printed in Greek or Latin so most people couldn't read it, only the priests. But King Henry VIII thought that everyone should be able to read it and so he commissioned the first English Bible in 1539. Of course, many people didn't like that idea, but a copy of the Bible was made available for everyone to read in every church around the country. This was a very difficult time in human history and lots of people were burned in bonfires. And here you can see a number of Protestants who are being burnt at the stake for their beliefs. This is where the story is connected to Brighton and the home of globalised English. Just a short distance northeast of Brighton is a small town called Lewis. And Lewis is famous for many reasons. Lewis was the hometown for one of the founders of the United States of America and Lewis was also one of the last towns to accept Christianity. In fact, it has one of the largest pagan festivals that can be found in Europe and that is celebrated on the 5th of November. Here you can see thousands of people walking through the streets of Lewis and every year huge crowds flock from all around. 
it's very difficult to even get into Lewis on that particular night. The start of the Lewis bonfire celebrations remembers 17 martyrs who were burnt at the stake, killed in front of Lewis Town Hall, and their crosses are walked through the streets for everyone to remember their deaths. Every year, huge sculptures of famous people are burnt on massive fires. Here you can see an effigy of David Cameron with a pig. Lewis is now home to the biggest bonfire celebrations that you can find anywhere in the UK. People travel from all over the country to visit Lewis, although now it's very difficult to get into the town and there are no trains or buses that go there. Every year they burn a huge sculpture of the Pope, which is very strange because there are a lot of Catholics who live there. Many foreign people are often really confused at this moment especially when they ask the crowd, what shall we do with the Pope? And they all shout, burn him! The fact is that many people who are involved in the Lewis fireworks are very strong Catholics, but they're against the Pope, which is a strange thing for many people from France, Italy and Spain to understand. And the people of Lewis have connected with and honoured many communities that have suffered oppression around the world. Here you can see them honouring the Zulus. This is a picture that comes from a very famous film called V for Vendetta, where the main character uses a mask of Guy Fawkes. And the story centres on a protest on the 5th of November. The film V for Vendetta, for a Hollywood film, is really worth watching. And now the mask has become famously associated with a large community of computer activists known as Anonymous. And so this is the story of the British Fireworks Night, or Guy Fawkes Night. So the reason that Guy Fawkes wanted to destroy the British government was because he wanted the Pope and the Catholic Church to remain in control of England and the British Isles. As they say in Lewis, remember, remember, the 5th of November. And one of the beautiful things about the 5th of November is that many people are celebrating different things at the same time. Some people will be celebrating Guy Fawkes trying to destroy the government. Some people will be celebrating Guy Fawkes being caught. And another group of people could be celebrating the fight against oppression. What's for certain is that all English people love a good fire, and who doesn't love fireworks? And the 5th of November, at the start of autumn and winter, is a perfect way to spend the night out under the stars, enjoying the beautiful flashing lights, and having a great time, and maybe a little drink. This was the story of Guy Fawkes and Fireworks Night in the UK, brought to you by Globalised English.